It's sure to be an electric environment inside of Doe Campbell Stadium this Saturday night at 8 p.m. as two teams from the Atlantic Coast Conference, Florida State and Clemson, meet in a top 10 showdown. I'm Ryan Pensy here on Bobby Bowden Field inside Doe Campbell Stadium, and the players have commented all week long how they remember back to last year's Oklahoma game and the atmosphere that the fans provided. Well, they'll count on those fans once again in another top 10 matchup. It's big, you know, fans need to, you know, they don't even need to be able to hit a cause, you know, they need to be the loudest possible, you know, because that's how it was when we played up in Clemson. They were loud, you know, they were really loud. You could barely hear yourself talking. You know, we need the fans, you know, just to support us all the way. I know they're going to be there, but I, we need them to make noise. You know, the defense out there on the field, man, they got to be loud. You know, that's what we love. That gets us hyped, you know, uh, and definitely messes with the other team's offense. So we need them. Why would you want to come see this? Is two top two, uh, top ten teams? I mean, everybody should. I mean, I don't really understand why there should not be a seat that's not filled in the house. Even if I was, wasn't was playing, I would still want to come and watch this game. We know that um, Doe Campbell Stadium is going to be filled out, and we know it's a night game. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I mean, you can't dream something better, you know? That's why you come to Florida State to play games like that. We be because support is everything, and, I, and we got a good fan base, and we got we got great support system. So w if we get a crowd like that, it, it would be exciting to see. Uh, that'll be good. Uh, come out here uh, for our fans to, you know, pack house and, you know, have an influence on the game as far as, you know, noise and, and things like that. But, you know, for as far as that type of environment for Oklahoma, you know, as far as this team, you know, you, you see it, but when you're warming up, you see it. When you come out of the tunnel, you see it. But once. Once that whistle blow and that kickoff or that kickoff return, you know, it's all zoned out. The names and faces are the same for the Clemson Tigers. Taj Boyd, Sammy Watkins, Andre Ellington. And for players like Bjorn Warner, they have seen vast improvement from their counterparts on the Tigers. I have a lot of respect for the offense because they have so many playmakers and you just have to prepare well, you know what I'm saying? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be decided on Saturday when we play the game, but you have to, you have to practice well to get to that point where you can make the game-changing Plays, you know what I'm saying? Last year it was his first year starting. Now he got his, you know what I'm saying? He got another belt. He won a lot of games. He's an ACC championship quarterback, so like, he's a lot better than last year, you know? It's not just the Clemson Tigers, the Florida State Seminoles are also an impressive team, the number four team in the country. The Clemson head coach Dabo Sweeney has a lot of respect for what he believes is the best defense in America. They're probably as talented as anybody I've seen since we've been here. Uh, I mean, these guys are uh, very deep at every position uh, and you know they just they've got great talent so you know very very uh, very good defense you know they lead the nation right now in five different categories and uh, I think they've only had I think they've only played red zone defense three times all year uh, and they obviously they've only given up three points so it's going to take a lot more than three points to win this game. Joined now by Seminoles.com, Brandon Meller. Brandon, uh, the, I guess the talk is over. It's time to play some football now. Florida State and Clemson maybe the biggest matchup that people are looking forward to seeing. Can Clemson's offensive line stop Florida State's front seven? It's a big question. It's a question for any team that plays Florida State. We know how good uh, FSU is on, on the defensive line. Tank Carradine, Brandon, uh, with Brandon Jenkins being out, he's really stepped in nice and done a really good job, obviously, with Bill Warner. And then, you know, those D tackles are, are terrific. They roll those guys in and out, get after the quarterback, close that pocket uh, and really stuff the run as well. This will be their biggest test yet this season. We know how good Clemson is offensively and we know what they can do with Taj Boyd and Andre Ellington running the ball and then you know Hopkins and Watkins on the outside. Big test for the Knowles. First true test uh, and I think after this game we'll really get a good, uh, a good feel for just how good this team is on defense. A lot of the talk this week, Brandon, has uh, been around the Clemson offense, Florida State defense, but it seems like there might be some players on Florida State's offense that are being overlooked. Who do you think some of those guys are? Well, you know, we look at a guy like, you know, uh, a guy like James Walter Jr. I mean, we talk about Chris Thompson, rightfully so. 197 yards, uh, incredible game for him first half last week against Wake Forest. But, you know, James Wilder Jr. was the man in the second half. You know, 94 yards has looked really good, picking up his blocks. And, and we've seen a lot of improvement from him. And, and maybe he's taken on uh, more of the job of getting uh, that, that secondary, that second you know, that second team look for, instead of Devontae Freeman. So uh, he's a guy that's going to be a factor. Chris Thompson can't carry the ball every single time. That's uh, just not good for, for him and for the Knowles. You need to mix that guy in there, mix water, and get and move the chains with that big body and see if he can kind of add another dimension that, you know, frankly, you know, Clemson didn't see last year when these two teams played.
As you see him running out behind us, this member of the special team for Florida State. Last time the Clemson Tigers were here, it was a long field goal. The Seminoles walked off from Dustin Hopkins. Could it come down to that again? It could. It's appropriate that he's out here right now because you're right. The last time this team was here, uh, Clemson lost that game on a miraculous kick. 55 yards, walk off. We remember that. It was crazy. Uh, and, and it's good to know that you have a guy like Dustin Hopkins where if this game is highly contested, which I think it will be, I think it'll be close, uh, if it comes down to that, that gold cleat he wears, uh, you feel good about it because, frankly, he's done it before. Make sure you tune into Seminoles.com after the game. Brandon Miller will have his analysis of Florida State and Clemson as well. We'll have all of our video coverage, including live reaction from head coach Jimbo Fisher from the Seminole locker room. We've got that, all the radio broadcasts and more. You can find all that information at Seminoles.com forward slash game day. It's a hard sellout inside of Vogue Campbell Stadium. Tickets are available, though, on StubHub. It's the official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of the Florida State Seminoles. Under the lights this Saturday night inside of Doe Campbell Stadium, we can't wait. We hope you'll enjoy it, too. For Seminoles.com, I'm Ryan Pincy.